Hi, right, everyone. Um, I am clearly in a different place today. We are in Sedona, Arizona, one of my favorite places. So everything is different and um, different timing, different streaming, different whatever, but I think we are live. So I'm going to get right to it because I'm about to do my coaching call for the shift, which happens on Thursdays, and we're going to spend a good amount of time talking about a concept that one of our members uh, sent in a question about. And I think it's so important that I wanted to bring it to you all because it's a pattern that I see consistently with people who are struggling with their weight and body image. And I'm going to spare the details of it because it's her new sort of private question and we're going to tease it apart in the group. Um, but essentially is this. After going through the work in the shift that we're doing and uncovering some beliefs and blocks and all kinds of things, what she's realizing is that she believes that her inability to consistently execute, whether it's a, a, a program or a plan or even just goals about how to do food and movement differently, she, she believes that her ability to consistently execute that is tied to feelings of a lack of self-worth and, you know, went on to sort of talk about how she got there and her history and upbringing. And the details actually don't really matter because I have heard hundreds, if not thousands of variations of the same story, all leading to the same ultimate belief which is a lack of value or worthiness and not feeling deserving of love and belonging, which in this case is translating to how she approaches and how she, um, her patterns of behavior with food and her body. So to be a little bit more clear, that anytime she is on a plan or she has a goal with you know her body or her weight, that she finds herself in self-sabotage or unable to execute the plan to reach that goal. And underneath that is an underlying belief that she is not worthy and deserving of having a body or weight that she loves and appreciates. Because having a body or weight that she loves and appreciates would be an indicator that she is a worthy and deserving person. She doesn't believe that. And for good reason, if you heard the story, right, it makes sense um, based on what she's gone through, that she has a belief system that she's not worthy and deserving of love and belonging. But the issue is that when we hold that belief that we are not worthy or deserving, we are unable to then consistently execute behaviors that are not congruent. So in other words, in order to consistently execute behaviors around food or movement or really anything in your life, I'll extrapolate this out here in a second, but in order to consistently execute behaviors that help you reach a goal, you first need to, you first need to believe that you are worthy and deserving of the goal that you're trying to reach. Because if you've been with me for any period of time, I teach a lot about why we are unable to execute outside the parameters of our belief system and identity that we hold. And so if we hold a belief system and identity that we are not worthy or we're not deserving or um, uh, only certain people get to have that type of relationship with their body or get to have that shape and size, but not me. If that is the belief that we hold, then we are unable to consistently execute behaviors that would bring us to that body that we said that we want. And so first, before we you know, go on a plan or a diet or a program or whatever it is, we have to work with that belief underneath, rewrite it, live into it. There's a process for doing that, right? Um, and once we do that, once we become congruent inside with what we've associated with the goal that we want outside, then we can execute behaviors in order to take us there. So let me put this in a different context. Let's say that you were single and wanting to find a partner, right? Um, and you 
you know, you have a desire to find a partner and, and, uh, you know, find that beautiful, loving connection. And that's your cognitive desire. I want to find a partner, but underneath your belief system and identity, um, says something like, nobody will love me. I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving. I'm not good enough. I'm not enough. Right. If that is the belief and identity you hold, then you are unable to execute consistent behaviors like putting yourself out there, going to meet new people, you know, exploring a dating app, whatever it is. You're unable to consistently execute behaviors that would lead, lead you to the end result of finding a partner because your beliefs and identity are the things ultimately that drive your behaviors. Different example, let's say that you want to find a new job or you want to make more money. Let's say you want to make more money, right? These are the, these are the big things that people um, tend to struggle with, health, finances, relationships, right? Let's say you want to find a, let's say you want to make a lot of money. And underneath you hold a belief or an identity that money is hard to come by. Um, money never lasts. I never have enough money. Um, other people make money, but not me. People with money are bad, right? If these are the beliefs and identity that are underlying, right? You can cognitively know I want to make more money, but if underneath your beliefs are, your beliefs are, you know, money is bad or it's difficult for me or I can't make it or everybody else can, but I can't. If that's what's underneath, then you are unable to consistently execute the behaviors that would lead you to more money. The desire, the cognitive desire, the cognitive thought of I want more money is not enough to override the belief or identity of it's not possible for me. You know, people with money are whatever, whatever your beliefs are. Your cognitive desire is not enough to override the belief and identity. And so this is where people get incongruent with the goals they have for themselves, but their inability to execute in order to reach those goals. And we call this self-sabotage. However, what's really going on is that we have, there. it's not congruent. What we want and who we believe we are is not congruent. And when that happens, you're unable to execute consistently the behaviors, the thoughts, the feelings, the behaviors that would lead you to what you want. Because we are always driven ultimately by who we believe that we are. So if this sounds like you, all the way back to the beginning where we started, if this sounds like you, if what you want is to have a different relationship with your body, if what you want is to have a different shape and size, but you don't believe that you are worthy and deserving of love and belonging, that lack of congruence there with what you want and what you believe is always going to keep you outside of that goal because that's the that's the cognitive goal that's what we call the top down goal the bottom up processing that starts in your nervous system and then is translated into beliefs and identity which then translates into consistent actions and behaviors that's bottom up processing your bottom up processing is what's in charge. So you can want all day long, but if that's not congruent with your belief and identity, we are unable to execute consistently in order to get what we want. All right. That is a deep message for you today. If this resonates for you, definitely think about jumping on the, the wait list for the shift we open in April. I'm going to be doing a free workshop for all of you all. I'm actually going a lot deeper into what we just talked about. Um, I will give you the links to sign up for all of those things for the free workshop um, and for the wait list. The April group is growing in interest. So make sure you hop on the wait list. You'll be able to sign up a few days early and I'm doing a special um, call just for the wait list people. So make sure you hop on the wait list um, for the next shift group. 
These are the types of things that we systematically dismantle in the shift. It's not a diet and exercise program. It truly is a course, like a course of study on how to do, think, and execute life differently in any area of your life. Just so happens, I love helping people with food and body image, but if there is any area of your life that you are struggling with and you're finding yourself not able to execute, even when you know better or want to do better, this is the program for you. So pop on the shift wait list. Uh, I'll also put in the link for you to sign up for the webinar. That's not till April 11th, a couple of weeks from now, but you can jump in early if you want. Um, and I'll see you next week for healthy conversations. Bye everyone.